Kasapa, it may be that wanderers of other sects will say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar, but only in empty places, not in company. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar, and he roars it in company. Or they may say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar, and in company, but he does so without confidence. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar in company and confidently. Or they may say, the ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar and in company and confidently, but they do not question him. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar and they question him. Or they may say, and they question him, but he does not answer. Or they may say, he answers, but he does not win them over with his answers. Or they may say, but they don't find it pleasing. Or they may say, but they are not satisfied with what they have heard. Or they may say, but they don't behave as if they were satisfied. Or they may say, but they are not on the path of truth. Or they may say, but they are not satisfied with the practice. They should be told that this is not true. The ascetic Gautama roars his lion's roar in company and confidently. They question him and he answers. He wins them over with his answers. They find it pleasing and are satisfied with what they have heard. They behave as if they are satisfied. They are on, are on the path of truth and they are satisfied with the practice. That kasapa is what they should be told. Once, Kasapa, I was staying at Rajagaha in the Vulture's Peak, and a certain practitioner of mortification called Nigroda consulted me about the practice of austerity, and he was delighted with my explanation beyond all measure. Lord, who on hearing Dhamma from you would fail to be delighted beyond all measure? I am delighted beyond all measure. Excellent, Lord, excellent. It is as if someone were to set up what had been knocked down or to point out the way to one who had got lost, or to bring an oil lamp into a dark place so that those with eyes could see what was there. Just so, the Blessed Lord has expounded the Dhamma in various ways. Lord, may I receive the going forth at the Lord's hands. May I receive ordination. And the Buddha said, Kasapa, whoever has formerly belonged to another sect and wishes for the going forth or ordination in this Dhamma Vinaya, must wait four months, and at the end of four months' probation, the monks who are, who are established in mind will give him the going forth and monastic ordination. But there can be a distinction of persons in this. And he said, Lord, if such is the case, I will even wait four years, and at the end of that time, let the monks give me the going forth and the monastic ordination. Then Kasapa received the going forth from the Lord himself and the monastic ordination. And the newly ordained Venerable Kasapa, alone, secluded, unwearying, zealous and resolute, in a short time attained that for which young men of good birth go forth from the household life into homelessness, that unexcelled cul culmination of the holy life, having realized it here and now by his own super knowledge and dwelt therein knowing birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived, what had been done has been done, there is nothing further here. And the Venerable Kasapa became another of the Arahans. It's the end of the Sutta. So here, you see, huh? he asked for the going forth and the ordination. The going forth is Babaja. That means becoming a Samanera. Lah. And the ordination refers to the Upasambad, Upasampada, the higher ordination of a Bhikkhu. Lah. Uh, so when he asked for the going forth, huh, the Buddha said, huh, somebody who comes from another sect, lah, external sect, uh, must wait four months. Lah. During the four months, uh, the monks will observe him, lah, whether he has uh, got rid of his wrong views. Lah. Uh, he has got rid of his wrong views and he's uh, practicing well. Lah. Then only they ordain him. Lah. Then he's, he said, uh, if that is the case, uh, he's willing to wait four years. Lah. That shows his sincerity. Lah. Uh, nowadays, uh, if you tell people, wait four months, uh, they say, ah, yeah, too long, uh, cannot wait uh, four months. <laughs> <laughs> but this 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 man, uh, he says, he's willing to wait four years. So when the Buddha saw that he was so sincere, the Buddha immediately ordained him, uh, and personally ordained him. And then he, after that, he practiced very hard, uh, and in a short time, short time could mean a few years, uh, and then he became an arahan. Uh. So you see the Buddha, uh, how the Buddha changed this man's thinking. Uh, this man, originally when he came to see the Buddha, he thought he was a real ascetic, uh, practicing all the very hard 
uh, ascetic practices uh, of uh, naked ascetic, uh, going naked, uh, uh, some of the things like sleeping on on the thorns, uh, eating only certain type of herb or a millet or rice or water plants, uh, all this thing, uh, and using uh, uh, instead of a, a, a cloth rope, uh, they, they use ropes uh, made of um, coarse hem, uh, uh, rags from the dust heap, bark fiber, antelope skin, grass, uh, human hair, horse hair, and all this thing, uh, and plucks the hair. Instead of shaving, uh, it plucks the hair. Uh, and then uh, sleep in the open air, uh, eating shit, and all these things. Uh. So they think by doing all these things, uh, they are real macho, uh, real hero. Uh. Uh, but the Buddha said, uh, these things uh, uh, are not difficult to uh, to practice, uh, but to practice the real Aryan way, uh, to perfect, uh, develop your morality, to develop your mind, uh, to develop your wisdom. That is hard. Uh. Why? Because any lay person can practice all these as austerities, ma, and even a slave girl can go naked and beg for the food and uh, sleep in the open air and all that. Uh. But to develop the the morality, the mind and the wisdom, that is really hard. Uh. Then, uh, so after the Buddha has uh, shown him uh, that uh, the real uh, Aryan practice uh, is harder to achieve uh, than the external sect, uh, austerity, austerities. Uh, then he asked the Buddha to explain how to develop the sila, the mind, citta, and the wisdom, panya. Uh, then the Buddha explained the uh, charana, vija, uh, the vija charana, uh, first charana, the practice of the holy life. Uh, various things like uh, sila, contentment, uh, uh, mindfulness and awareness, uh, moderation in eating, uh, um, eat, uh, what, uh, devoted to wakefulness, uh, um, seclusion, living in a secluded place, and meditating until he attains the four jhanas, uh, uh, that is the uh, practice of the Charana, which is basically development of sila and citta, the mind. And then using the fourth jhana, uh, use the mind to get various insights la, and to get various psychic powers. La. That is vija, la, knowledge. La. Uh, and the highest knowledge la, is the destruction of the asavas, la, destruction of the flow of the mind, la, the continued flow of the mind and uh, and become liberated. La, uh. So after he heard all this explanation, uh, he was so impressed uh, that he asked to go forth uh, to be a disciple of the Buddha. And the Buddha allowed him to go forth uh, and he practiced very hard. Uh. He says, somebody like this external set ascetics, uh, they are willing to suffer, you know. They are very sincere. Uh. But sometimes the wisdom uh, is, 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 is insufficient. That's why they practice these aust- austerities uh, without getting real um, fruit now. Uh. For, for the hard practice. Uh. But when they come into, when they meet the real Dhamma, then they practice very hard. Uh. In a short time, they become enlightened. Mm. They are willing not to, not to sleep. They are willing to practice all the time. Uh, not to go into town, live in a forest, beg for their food and all these things. Uh. So, okay, we stop here for tonight. Anything to discuss? Uh. Oh, definitely not. This Kasapa is a clan name. There are many people uh, who are called Kasapa. That is not his real name. That's his clan name. Mm-hmm. Yes.
Then I found that many of them come from very good families, and many people from good families, they have natural sleep lab. Even though they are not very religious, they are from young, they can be told not to see, not to die. So they have very natural sleep lab. And um, even though they don't really practice, most people, they can grasp the armor very fast. So let's say for nowadays you see the life is not so natural in this day, you see people they won't stop the line or not, or do things in doing what they want. So when they come into contact with someone, they may listen to the summer and they think they they do not really practice with very like um uh, for example, putting in the right effort, checking all the time whether they have a wholesome state or unwholesome state, whether they have a review or whatsoever. It's just listening to the drama without putting real effort in the practicing the whole of the moment of the whole time. And they have, how well can the person do that? This one is uh, depends on the individual, depends on past life. And uh, so it's hard to say that there's no uh, fixed rule. Uh, so we hard to say. But uh, if, uh, if you find many of these Brahmins, uh, because uh, uh, they understand uh, morality and all that, uh, so uh, even though they have wrong view, uh, when they listen to the Buddha's Dhamma, uh, they attain stream entry. Uh, mm, so... I would like to ask one question. Um, what kind of ascetic practice is placed by the Buddha? Um, in the, um, the ascetic practices praised by the Buddha, uh, some of them are in the suttas, but uh, uh, they are called dutangas. La, and 13 um, are mentioned uh, in the Visuddhi Maga. La. Uh, begging for your food, eating one meal a day, uh, wearing rag ropes, that means ropes uh, made from cloth, uh, picked up by the roadside or in a cemetery and all that. No? And uh, uh, of these uh, 13 dutangas, uh, the hardest to practice uh, is the last, uh, which is to sleep sitting up. Uh. Mm. But... Uh, I can tell you from experience uh, that um, unless you have good samadhi, uh, you should not practice it. Uh, if you try to practice this uh, without good samadhi, uh, uh, you'll be sitting and sleeping. Uh. This is of no benefit. Uh. Uh, the aim, the aim of, of sitting sleep, uh, sleep, or they call sitting sleeping. Uh, the, the the aim uh, is to stay awake. So if you have good samadhi and you don't want to lie down. Uh, then you just uh, keep on nodding your head, la. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're awake. La. But you don't have any samadhi uh, in the beginning, in the very early stage, you practice it. La. You'll be sitting and sleeping. La. And you don't get good sleep. La. Because uh, after two hours, uh, you wake up. La, because your stomach is all cramped when you're sleeping. Like that. Uh, so it's a very uncomfortable position. So after two hours, you get up. La. So it's not not worthwhile. Mm. It's just a name, la. It's just a uh, man side here. Is uh, as the sutta says, uh, he can see, but he cannot hear, la. Or he can hear, but he cannot see, la. The devas. Mm. Uh, some of this stream entry is said not to be able to fall to the all the planes. Is there really no chance that he or Bodhama seems to say he's a. Uh, uh, during the Buddhist time, there wasn't too time when he got married, and isn't that like the uh, biggest common, common offense? Wouldn't that. And even if he would have uh, attained stream entry, wouldn't that also send him to the world's plane? No, what, what is the coming offense you mentioned? Uh, killing the Buddha. Oh, killing the Buddha. Uh, if, if, a, if a person wants to kill, kill the Buddha, 
then uh, he cannot be a, a, a sutapanna, cannot be a person who has attained stream entry. Person who has attained stream entry uh, would generally not uh, not kill out of hatred. Mm. He might kill accidentally. <laughs> Once a person has become an Arya, then he has this Aryan morality. Aryan morality con- consists of seven precepts. Right action, which is you will not purposely kill or steal or commit adultery. And right speech, which means he will not lie purposely or uh, carry tales to make people quarrel or uh, use uh, uh, vulgar or coarse speech or idle gossip. Mm. And uh, these are the seven Aryan precepts. So once a person has become an Arya, uh, stream entry, he understands the Dhamma, he understands uh, Kama Vipaka, action and its result, so he will not do wrong. Mm. Uh, and follow up if someone tries to kill the Buddha before he attains Sukhamana, would he um, have to be celebrated? Would he have to? And will he have to quit the result, quit the karma done to me? He did something wrong before Sutapanna. Yes, I guess he would, because uh, he still has an ego. If you have an ego, uh, Kama Vipaka will follow you. No? Yes, if he did something serious, uh, he'll be like this... Uh, we heard that Sutta Samanya Pala Sutta, the king who killed the father. After he killed the father, the mind was very disturbed. So when he listens to Dhamma, he, he doesn't penetrate and doesn't sink in. So he cannot become a stream enterer. So somebody who has this uh, intention to kill the Buddha, even if you don't succeed, nah, you have a lot of hatred. And then later, if you realize that the Buddha was uh, an, a, is an enlightened being, nah, you have this so much remorse, I don't think... The, the mind can 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 be at peace. Ah uh, yes, this one there, there was uh, uh, this uh, Angulimala. There's a sutta about Angulimala. He killed many people. Uh, then after that. Uh, he came to the Dhamma and uh, practiced very hard. Uh, he be, he became a monk, practiced very hard and became enlightened. Uh, actually, kill, kill, having killed so many people, uh, his mind would have been very disturbed. Uh. For him to become an Arahant uh, shows uh, he has uh, super determination. Because uh, I had a devotee in Penang who told me that he had a friend who was a gangster and this gangster killed two people in gang fights before and later when he he was older maybe in his 50s he tried to uh, learn meditation but the mind was so disturbed he could not calm down his mind could not uh, his mind was just swirling around became very frightened uh. So, for him to overcome that, uh, the t- determination must have been very, very strong. I'm sure uh, if he, when he tried to meditate, uh, all these uh, people he killed uh, would have uh, appeared to him, uh, all the ghosts and all that, to, to disturb him. Mm. But the Buddha went to uh, show him the path, uh, because I think the Buddha saw uh, that this person uh, is capable of enlightenment, uh, must have a uh, very good... Uh, what we call good roots uh, from past life. Uh, hmm? 
this kind of case uh, is uh, exception. Uh, generally, a uh, person who has killed even one man, even one person, uh, I don't think you you be able to to make, to find peace of mind. Huh? Uh, but exceptions, uh, just like generally, uh, lay people cannot become arahant. But in the Vinaya books, we find one, uh, a few, uh, a few. They listen to the Dhamma and become arahant. Very exceptional people. But you see, yeah, when you listen to the CD, whatever questions you wanted to ask, huh, the people at the audience would have asked already. Correct. Mm. Correct. But the the fact that the the question arises, huh, uh, gives them an opportunity uh, to ask in future, lah. But if they attended the Dhamma talk, uh, probably uh, since their mind is blur blur, uh, being old, uh, they would have forgotten to ask the question at that time. <laughs> what I was trying to say about listening to the Dhamma talk is you can listen again and again. Listen again and again. The more times you listen, uh, the more you will catch, you will, the more you will understand. Whereas you go to a Dhamma talk, you only listen once only. If you miss, uh, or you forgot to ask, uh, you have lost the chance already. A lot of people, uh, they go to Dhamma talk, uh, they don't know how to ask questions. Or even sometimes they come to me uh, uh, after dana. Uh, and then I ask them to ask questions. Uh, they say, I had a lot of questions, you know. I prepared a lot of questions and I come here, I forgot already. Uh, yeah, like that. Uh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, possibly, uh, he was uh, following, he was supposed to have been following one of these external sect uh, teachers. Uh, and some of these, uh, they want uh, blood sacrifice uh, for their God. Uh. So it seems uh, he may have been one of those. Uh, he, he, he did the killing uh, to, to offer to the gods. Uh, uh, so not out of hatred. Uh. But still, uh, whatever the, the, the reason, uh, if you have killed a, a human being, uh, the coming offense is very great uh, and your mind will be very disturbed. Uh. The fact that he could become an arahan uh, uh, is surprising, uh, very surprising, because uh, I think out of a hundred people, uh, probably, or a thousand people, uh, only one will succeed. Uh. Yeah, Anguli Mahla is in the Sutta, Majima Nikaya. So she haven't listened to the Angu- Majima Nikaya. If you want to, you can, uh, but uh, when we sit down in meditation, uh, we are supposed to practice meditation. And meditation uh, in the Buddha's uh, teaching uh, refers to the jhanas. Because in the Majjhima Nikaya, Ananda, remember Ananda was asked what type of meditation is praised by the Buddha. And he said the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. So if you are sitting in meditation, your aim uh, should be to attain the jhanas. That means you stick to, if you're practicing the breath meditation, you only focus on your breath and nothing else. 
Okay? If you want to contemplate on the Dhamma, you don't have to sit down. You can walk with your eyes open uh, and contemplate the Dhamma. When you're driving the car, also you can think about the Dhamma that you have heard. So this contemplation uh, is Vipassana. Vipassana is the seventh factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, meditation is the eighth factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Real meditation uh, is sitting with your eyes closed. Uh, uh, vipassana is contemplation. Contemplation means uh, you put your attention on four things, uh, or one of four things, uh, your body, your feelings, your mind, and the Dhamma, uh, the Buddha's Dhamma. Uh, so that can be done uh, without sitting with your eyes closed. Mm, you can be walking, you can be standing still, you can be lying down also, you can think of Dhamma. Mm. So if you are sitting, you want to contemplate on Dhamma, you can. Uh, it's not that you cannot. Uh, who is they? Are you talking about the animals or are you talking about the men? Men. So? We are supposed to talk Dhamma only to the people who want to listen. We are not selling medicine uh, <laughs> in the market, uh, telling every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know. Dhamma has to be requested. People request for it, and uh, we speak Dhamma. Uh, so you must see uh, whether people want to listen or not. Okay. If he is interested to listen, uh, then it's good. Uh. So he, when he listens, uh, he might change his way. Uh. For example, many years ago, I was giving a Dhamma talk in Penang, uh, in the Penang Buddhist Association. And after the talk, uh, one lady came to me. She says uh, she sells uh, chicken rice. And so I uh, has to slaughter the chicken. So I say, why don't you buy the from the, the what, how do you call it the cold meat, huh? From the freezer one, huh? Already slaughtered one. She said that one, uh, people don't want to eat. They want freshly slaughtered one, more tasty, la. So ask me whether got coming offense. I say yes. So I say the best is you try to change your livelihood, la. And then about a year later, she came to see me. She told me she changed her livelihood already. Mm. So you see, eh, there are some people, after listening to the Dhamma, they can change. It's whether they want to listen or not. Most of them, eh, if they are not willing to change, eh, they will refuse to listen. They won't come near. Because they know after listening, eh, they have to change. <laughs> Many years ago also, when I was staying in a cave on Penang Hill, uh, on Sundays usually people come to do dana, uh, offer food and all that. Uh, so uh, there was a man who came, uh, and I heard from others uh, that he's a butcher, he slaughters pigs. Uh. So I tried to talk to him, uh, but uh, no effect, uh, he refused to change. Mm. Okay, shall we end here?